Alrighty. Well, I'm pretty tired. That was a that was a big day of work, I'll tell ya. I hadn't worked in a while, so I was using muscles that I hadn't used in a while. Um it's been a few weeks since I've gotten any work. I've been spending money but I haven't been earning it. So it's good to be earning again anyway. Um it's easier to spend it than it is to earn it, as I'm sure you all know. Uh, it's funny, uh, maybe I shouldn't do this, really, but I'm going to. Because there's something that's bothering me. And uh, I'm seeing it, and it bothers me, that's all. Um, the uh, woman that I got into some controversy with <laughs> last year... Um, and we're no longer associated with each other because of that. Um, basically, it's sort of like this. And I've noticed this is something that some people do. I've seen it especially with women. I'm not saying to men, some men don't do it, but it's just my experience of this has mostly been with women. Although I've known the odd man who would do this too. Uh, there are certain people that um, will do what a two-year-old does. They'll test you. They're always testing you, always seeing how far they can push you. And then when they reach your limit, when they push you as far as you can be pushed, and they get a negative reaction, then it's the big, oh my God, you know, I'm being abused and all that, you know. If, if, if you say a cross word to them or if you disapprove of what they're doing or anything else, this is what you get. And, you know, you're abusive and all that. Well, that, that's what I found myself up against last year with this woman. Um, it was a case of repeatedly not keeping her word. Um, she would make her, uh, arrangements to come out here where I am. You know, spend some time out here or whatever. Claimed that she wanted to do that. I would. You know, it's it's a big performance for me to get ready out here because I don't have running water. I have to boil water to bathe. I have to pretty much bathe in the sink. You know, just with 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 a washcloth and everything. And it's kind of a big thing anyway. And of course, I didn't want to look like a bum when she'd come out here. So. <coughs> I needed to start getting ready pretty much the day before she got here to make sure that everything was nice out here and that, you know, that I was presentable and so on. And, um, you know, just because I'm a bum doesn't mean I want to look like one, especially in front of somebody whose opinion matters to me, and, and hers did, you know. So anyway, I, I do all that, and she just wouldn't show up. She would be heard it would initiate it and everything, but she'd never show up. And, um, anyway, it got to the point where, you know, she just wouldn't show up. And then when I would get a hold of her and say, well, I guess you're not coming, you know, then she'd send me a message back. Oh, well, I, uh, I decided I needed to go home and go to sleep instead. I never got in touch, never never bothered to tell me or anything that this is what she was going to do, would just do that. And so, of course, I felt like I was taken for granted. I felt like I was not appreciated at all and not respected. And I think that most reasonable people would feel that way under the circumstances. Anyway, apparently I'm not reasonable, though, but still, I think I am, even if it's said that I'm not. But here's the thing. Okay. Um, it is what it is. Now, she suffers from various uh, issues, I guess you could say, and so on. Uh, and psych uh, psychiatric issues, I guess. Uh, so she says, anyway, she talks about having anxiety, and I believe that. I see. I saw a little bit of that in her. Um, a, a attention deficit disorder was another thing that she had mentioned her ADHD, which I guess is Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. I could see that, too, in her, you know. Now, one thing I liked about her is that we saw the world the same. We saw the, the system the same and so on. We saw the hypocrisy in it and all the rest of it. We both believe in God. I wonder sometimes if she doesn't hide behind God a little bit, but that's just me wondering, that's all. 
But here's the thing. Um, she did borrow $400 from me. She claimed she was in dire straits. Services to her house were going to get cut off and so on. Um, I had the money sitting here because it was part of the savings that I'm, I'm saving to buy a truck. So I had the money sitting here. It's not like the money was doing anything. Obviously, I'd need it back. But still, I told her she could have the money to use. She said she'd pay me back in two weeks when she got paid the full amount. Um, anyway, um, I told her, I said, well, you know, it's going to break my heart if you don't pay me back. And she said, I wouldn't do that, Tom. I'll, I'll pay you back. Don't worry about it. Well, then she did come out here then, and she had we had a bit of a visit out here then. I gave her the $400. She left. Later that afternoon, she posted pictures on Facebook of her two dogs and their nice new sweaters with their new haircut. She took her dogs to the dog groomers. And um, anyway, in the car, the envelope with the money in it that I gave her was sitting there on the seat beside the dog with the nice new sweater and everything, you know, and she was thanking the dog groomer for doing such a good job. Well, I mean, okay, she's a dog groomer. She actually knows how to do that. She has a room in her house, a dog grooming studio. Now, I don't think she does it professionally anymore, really. Apparently, well, she kind of got blacklisted in town because she wasn't keeping her appointments was leaving people waiting in her driveway and stuff like that, which again is a familiar sort of a, a thing to me. I, I have no trouble believing that. Anyway, it ended up, she that's what she did. She took her two little dogs to the dog groomers. But I figured, you know what? If she pays the money back, it's her money. So it's her business what she does. She wasn't exactly honest about the situation, about the circumstances, but still, if she pays it back, it's her money. Well, when she came to get the money, the first thing she said to me was, I'm not going to be able to pay the full, full 400 back all at once. And so, um, would it be okay if I make two payments? 200 in two weeks, and another 200 in the following two weeks. I didn't want to see her experience hardship, and I still believe that the money was for... Um, to pay bills, you know, so that was fine. I agreed to that Well the two weeks come around she was supposed to be here at seven o'clock in the morning. She had to be at work at eight um, She never showed up At shortly after eight I called her at home and woke her up and At that point I said I can't deal with you, you know, I'm going to disassociate from you I can't deal with you. You don't keep your word she was crying on the phone. I could hear her sobbing. I was crying too. It was really emotional. I broke down too. We both did. Anyway, I just said goodbye to her. You know, told her that I thought it was too bad, but I couldn't deal with her, and I hung up. Well, then she started sending me messages apologizing, which I ignored at first. And then when she when she stopped, she stopped sending me those messages. And later on that afternoon, I started getting messages saying, well, you know, really, you need to learn not to be so harsh. You need to learn not to be so judgmental. You need to learn to cope when things don't go according to plan. You need to learn that life happens. Well, I mean, look, if she was on her way out and she got into a car wreck and that's why she didn't show up, that would be life happening. Um, you know, now she was talking about how she'd been working two jobs and was tired and all that. I checked Facebook Messenger and she'd been on there until four o'clock in the morning talking to somebody. So uh, she'd chosen to be up until four o'clock in the morning. That's the reason she wasn't up when she needed to be. Anyway, she was also late for her job. She was working, doing some, doing some office work at a, at a, at a scrapyard scrapyard where I often deal actually but that's what she was doing um she's no longer there um she also has another job a full-time job that was, was starting in the afternoon then so she was working part of the day at the scrapyard and then going to wherever job and um anyway 
she is a hard worker when she's when she's working she's a very hard worker it's just that her word is no good you know anyway i see her videos that she posts on facebook live uh, she's right about a lot of things in terms of how the system works and the government she's absolutely right but uh, it's just that uh, she tends not to see her role in situations anyway uh, there was a bit of a back and forth between us anyway when she started all that I said look you you know you don't keep your word and I responded to her and I said I don't like doing this but I have to disassociate from you because I, I can't keep doing this you know anyway it ended up um, uh, she got involved with with a fellow who was a, a drug what they call a drug wholesaler for organized crime that didn't work out uh, she had a, a drug dealer living in her house as a boarder um, and I, she knew that he, she knew what he was doing she knew what business he was in and I know that because I had conversations with her about it anyway uh, just a few months ago a couple months ago I guess her house got raided by the, by the local police because this guy was there and um, she had been posting up videos ridiculing the local police now, i understand i don't really care for the police either i get it but i also know that if you're going to do that you better not have anything going on in your life that they can use against you because those people can be pretty petty you know and if there's anything at all they can use against you they will well then there was this raid now her neighbors had been complaining about activity at that house at her house about um trespassers in their yards about things being missing from their yards about being threatened and cursed at and obscene gestures made at them when they did confront trespassers about having their property damaged and so on fences and sheds and things that were damaged anyway um she posted videos up basically reaming out her neighbors for being uncaring and not caring about people who have addiction issues and, and on like that um anyway now she's claiming she didn't know what was going on she knew that the people in her house were users but didn't know they were dealing which like i say that that is not true she did know but anyway <laughs> like i said i know she know knew because i had conversation i had i can think of one conversation specifically that i had with her about that but anyway, um, now she's on the thing because she's being evicted now. Her landlord is evicting her because of this raid. Well, so now she's on the big help the homeless kick. This is the latest thing now. She's taken on that as a cause. Um, of course, she's in danger of being homeless because she can't afford to pay market rent just like so many people can't. And it is too bad. You know, I mean, look, I'm not saying that it's a great thing. I don't wish that on her or anything. But at the same time, she did it to herself. She's saying, well, my landlord is making me homeless. No, your landlord is responding to a situation that she created is what's happening there. But again, there's, the landlord's a narcissist. He doesn't care 